after praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sending him his greetings and salutations upon the final Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. And our journey during this blessed month of Ramadan and should be our journey outside this blessed month of Ramadan. Ahmiyatun niya, the importance of one's intention. The intention to intend to do a good action as we began with. And to follow that intention with an amal, with actions. A'mal salih, righteous actions, seeking the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all alone. And with these righteous actions comes the third part of our journey. That the type of actions that we do, there needs to be an element of focus, of devotion, of commitment, of humility, of obedience, of feeling degraded, debased in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because we find ibadah which doesn't have tadhullun, doesn't have an element of disgracing oneself in a sense of total commitment towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, servitude, submissiveness, which in general known in the Arabic language, al khushur billahi subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because otherwise, ibadah just becomes a form of external display. That's why that many people, they may carry out actions of obedience, but it has no impact upon them. Some of us may have been fasting and coming towards the end of Ramadan. Do we really feel like changed individuals, changed personalities? Or well, as we find in numerous traditions, maybe the person who fasts only gains fatigue and thirst during the day and only gains tiredness during the night of standing in the night prayer because they fail to understand the real intent of asiyah. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَبْتَقُونَ You may at attain piety, consciousness, devotion, commitment towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Does you find that submissiveness towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the lifting of devotion, commitment towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is actually amongst the signs of the day judgment. The first thing that will be lifted from this Muslim ummah will be servitude, submissiveness, devotion and commitment. In other narrations that we find, different wordings that we find. The first thing to be lifted from this Muslim Ummah will be devotion, commitment. Until very rarely will you find somebody who's really committed towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Does you find that the prayer just becomes the pecking of a hen, becomes movements, swift movements that we find, but no real inner adaption, no inner focus towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Does you find amongst the first commandments inside the Quran, وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ وَإِنَّهَا لَكَبِيرَةٌ إِلَّا Amongst the first commandments, seek aid and assistance. The beginning of the Quran, Iyaka na'budu wa Iyaka nasta'in. Al ibada lillahi subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al isti'ana billahi subhanahu wa ta'ala. Seeking an aid and assistance from only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah lays out certain actions that you should do that strengthen your iman. Iman. Strengthen your life. Strengthen your journey. <coughs> Seek aid and assistance via patience. Wassalah. Devotion, prayer towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa innaha la kabiratun illa ala al-khashi'een. It's going to be something difficult. Most people are going to find it difficult to pray five times a day. Except for whom? Al-khashi'een. Those people who enjoy their prayer. Who find solitude, <laughs> devotion, commitment inside their prayer. Proximity. Taqarrub ila Allah. Devotion, they enjoy the prayer. That's a sign of a real believer. That's when Allah subhanahu wa speaks about the believers. Inside Surah Al-Mu'minun, the 23rd chapter of the Quran, the first 10 odd ayat or so, or the first 12 ayat in these 10 sifat, it mentions, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ أَوَّلْ صِفَةَ للمؤمنين. Allah speaks about the first characteristic, about the believing individuals. قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ Indeed, successful are the believers. Total, devote, total rescuing on the day, judgment, deliverance, happiness, total achievement that we find. For what type of individuals will it be? Those who are submissive inside their prayers towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
And the strange thing is that when Allah subhanahu wa mentioned the rest of these sifat, these characteristics of the believers who turn away from vain speech, vulgar speech, who guard their private parts, their chastity, who don't make vulgar speech, but, but are true to their promises and their oaths and what they promise, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala once again mentions about these individuals. These are those individuals that we find who are doing such an action that we find, who are going to gain paradise. الَّذِينَ يَرِثُونَ الْفِرْدَوْسِ هُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ But Allah mentions before that وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَلَىٰ صَلَوَاتِهِمْ يُحَافِذُونَ مَرَّتَيْنِ Twice Allah mentions about as salah before them promising those individuals promising Jannah Al-Firdaus So they begin their life in devoting their prayers towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they are those individuals who guard the, their prayers Some 83 odd occasions inside the Quran وَعَقِيمُ الصَّلَاةِ وَآتُ الزَّكَاةِ Establish the prayer, iqamatu salah. Have we ever studied what's the meaning of iqamatu salah? Of establishing the prayer. The prayer isn't just what we visually, we visualize, think this is the prayer. It has a prelude, it has preconditions, it has a build up, it has the prayer, it has after the prayer, it has preserving the prayer. And that's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always mentions about the prayer. In other places inside the Quran, وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَلَىٰ صَلَاتِهِمْ دَائِمُونَ Believers are those individuals, دَائِمُونَ not marratan, or marratayn, or yawmul jum'ah, or ramadan. That's not the Quran says. Just on yawmul jum'ah. Or when you feel spiritually you want to uplift yourself. Or things are not going your way, you offer that prayer. Or just in this blessed month of Ramadan, which is good, which is khayr. Could be a, a, a bench of, of bouncing towards other actions, encouragement for people. But the Quran says, وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَلَىٰ صَلَاتِهِمْ دَائِمُونَ They are for, forever always worried about their prayers. Forever focusing towards their prayers towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And likewise, if I will let them ala salatim, you have it all. It's a sort of ma'arij. They preserve their prayers. They guard their prayers. This concept of focusing towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah mentions a long list of believing individuals inside Surah Al Ahzab. They sifat once again. Till eventually Allah mentions, wal khashi'ina, wal khashi, wal khashi'ad. That the men who are observant who are devoted or committed, and the women who are devoted or committed. Inside Surah Al-Imran that we find, khashi'ina lillah. They are devoted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is khushu'a? What is submissiveness? What is devotion to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Wa yakhiruna lil adhqani yabkun, wa yaziduhum khushu'a. You find that believing individuals, those who are totally immersed, they are totally immersed in remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that it overcomes them. And you find that they go in a state of sujood, in a state of prostration, obedience towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Allah increases them in devotion towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And thus we find that the best creation. Read through the prayer of the Prophet sallallahu read through his life, read through his devotion, read through his commitment, read through what type of personality, what type of individual he was, how he was when he stood in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's you find the hadith Abu Dawood, and likewise the Sunnah of Imam Tirmidhi that when the Prophet will stand inside prayer that we find وَهُوَ يُسَلِّي وَلِجَوْفِي أَزِيزٌ كَأَزِيرِ الْمِرْجَلِ مِنَ الْبُكَائِ There was this boiling kind of a sound emanating from his chest a cooking sound like water that's gushing out out of a pot a, a, a weeping sound that was coming out of the chest of the Prophet That's how our Rasul كَانَ فِي السَّلَامِ you could, you could hear this sound that he was weeping inside his prayer, his body, his heart is weeping of standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And thus you find that whilst offering our prayers, what, what type of prayers do we offer? What's our devotion towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You find elements of increasing khushu lillahi subhanahu wa ta'ala. Glancing at the place of sujood. Don't look here, don't look right, left. Don't look around. Look at mawdi' sujood. Look at the location of sujood when you're offering the prayer. And as you find that, a warning in such numerous narrations that we find, that people just don't look around that we find. What is the matter with people? That they're raising their, their, their sight up to the heavens inside their prayer. They should abstain from that. If not, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will snatch away their sights. Inside the hadith in Bukhari and Muslim, will snatch their sight away from people who are standing in prayer, who are looking at other individuals, looking at the heavens, Looking around them, ulama have described this as ikhtilas of shaitan. This is the snatching of the shaitan. The shaitan takes the person's prayer 
person who looks around inside their prayer, who isn't focused, who isn't devoted, that's remember I've highlighted numerous signs of showing a lack of devotion. A person who begins to fiddle with their clothes, with their watch, with their garments, with the way they're standing, just worried about that. This shows a lack of devotion, a lack of commitment towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, excessive fidgeting. We had the battle of fuqah expressed inside works of fiqh, a person moves excessively inside their prayer, فَقَدْ بَطَلَتْ صَلَاتُهُ His salah has been invalidated. That's what some fuqah have mentioned. That's not the right view, but just to awaken us. That's how deeply they discuss these, these intricate matters. Persons who are continuously fidgeting inside their prayer, moving about inside their prayer, their prayer can be invalidated. وَأَنْتَ تَقُومْ أَمَامَ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانُهُ تَعَالَى You're standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لَمَّا تَقُومْ أَمَامَ الرَّئِيسِ الْمَلِكِ الْوَزِيرِ you stand in front of the king, a leader, a minister, a director, person in authority. How do you stand in front of them? Do you twitch? Do you yearn to move? Do you wander around? Or well, everything about you is devoted to that individual. وَلِلَّهِ مَثَلُ الْأَعْلَى To Allah belongs the greatest example. And the only example. وَقُومُوا لِلَّهِ قَانِتِينَ Stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in total devotion. As if the whole heavens and the earth are about to collapse upon you. As if it's your final prayer, your final moment to stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you're moving from here and there. And you find this taharruk that you find, many of us you find the difference in our prayers is like the heavens and the earth. The distance of the heavens and the earth. People stand in the same sufuf, in the same rows. But you find hearts at various degrees. Various elements of devotion. Someone's heart is there. Someone's mind is there. How many of our hearts and our minds are towards committed towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Wa huwa halaka. The Prophet he described a person who begins to drift away, then that is destruction. Destruction for that individual. And thus we find that the concept of developing focus towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some people they may weep. But that weeping, as they may say, is just a, a fake weep. There's no real intent that we find. Just because people are weeping, people, other people begin to weep. Weeping towards the Quran, weeping towards the Salah, is via understanding those ayat. Understanding the impact of those ayat. A Rasul alayhi salatu a famous hadith, when he speaks to Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he says to Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, Iqra alayya. Recite upon me, recite to me. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud says that Aqru alayk ya Rasulullah, I recite the Qur'an to you Qad unzila alayk Qur'an has been sent down upon you The best reciter of the Qur'an is a Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa The best reciter of the Qur'an The best memorizer of the Qur'an The best half of the Qur'an How can I recite the Qur'an to you? The Qur'an is being sent down upon you ya Rasulullah He says I want to hear from other than my own self that's we find man, man lam yataghanna bil Qur'an fa laysa minna Allah bestowed certain people with a beautiful voice with the Qur'an, it, it awakens people, moves people and especially if they have a khushu the commitment towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it awakens people so the Prophet he wanted to hear it from other than his own self he wanted to, if he can use such words, awaken himself refresh his iman remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says to Abdullah bin Sa'ud, read Abdullah al-Masood begins to read from Surah An-Nisa. فَكَيْفَ إِذَا جِئْنَا مِنْ كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ بِشَهِيدٍ وَجِئْنَا بِكَ عَلَى هَأُولَاءِ الشَّهِيدًا When it comes to this verse, how will it be when we bring you as a witness and we bring all the other nations, bring you as a witness over all of the other nations? The Prophet Isaac says, okay, stop there, stop there. And I stop reciting. فَنَذَرْتُ إِلَى وَجْهِ I looked at his face. فَإِذَا أَيْنَانِي فَإِذَا أَيْنَانِي تَجْرِيَانِ you find that his two eyes, and we find that we began, Tadrifan began to shed tears. Weeping. How will it be on that day we bring you the messenger on that day to stand as a witness over all of mankind? He understands the impact of his ayat of the Quran to awaken him, to remind him this great privilege that we find. Inside Surah Nisa, also that we find the, the virtue, the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, alayka, alayka ya Rasulullah, upon you, message of Allah is so immense. So immense is the blessings upon you that Allah subhanahu wa showered upon you. Likewise, Ubay ibn Ka'ab. Ubay ibn Ka'ab, the Prophet said to him as well, recite. Recite. He said, what should I recite? 
He said, Allah has told you to told me to tell you to recite. Ubay bin Kaab said, Allah Samani. Fabada and Yabki. Ubay bin Kaab began to weep. He said, Did Allah mention me by name? Did he say to by name to Ubay bin Kaab to recite? He said, Yes. Fakara Suratul Bayina. So he read Suratul Bayina. Hada Yadullu. Ala Khushu Lilay subhanahu wa ta'ala. Khushu devotion. Had the companions they love the Quran. Had the Prophet Isa want to do hear the Quran, recite in the Quran, the movement of the Quran that we find. But as for many of us, the Quran described. You just marvel at this Quran. That's what many of us do, we just marvel at the Quran. You know the, the Quran is so great. The Quran is so magnificent. The Quran is so glorious. The Quran is so special. There's no doubt the Quran is magnificent. Quran al Azim. Is, is, is sublime, is, is lofty, is high, should be honored. But that's not all that the Quran is just to be marveled at. And then you laugh. With the same breath, you just laugh about everything, a joke about everything, and you don't weep. Samidun ulama tafazil mentioned is to whistle, to clap. To be indulged in, in vulgar speech, music, anything like that that we find Rilamat Tafsir have discussed. That you find that two things cannot exist. You can't have the Quran, you can't have musika, you can't have music. Abdullah Masrud mentioned that you find these two things, you find that music only sprouts hypocrisy in the heart. They don't exist in the heart of the believer. They can't exist. Two things can't exist in the heart of the believer. Those things they drift you away from Allah. This shows da'ful iman. People say we need alleviation. We need something to relax our soul and our body. Uqsimu billayl azim. Wa hadda al-kuffar. Even disbelieving individuals. Lama yasba'oon al-Qur'an. When they hear the Qur'an, it moves them. Wa hadda awla kana. There are people who are dumb. Who could not hear. They could not hear. When a sheikh recited the Qur'an, they began to weep. For sheikh shakul. And these people, are they literally, are they dumb? Are their faculties taken away from them? Mass and love. He said, of course their faculties are taken away from them. I teach them sign language. I teach them sign language. He goes, la ala mustahil. It's not possible. He read the Quran again. They weep, they wept again. They began to weep again. They, they're dumb. They're deaf. But the, the impact of the Quran penetrated into their hearts. People couldn't hear the Quran. Yet yeah, a mu'jiza, a miracle from Allah. Quran delivered into their ears, went into their hearts and moved them. We're living individuals. We're hearing individuals. We have faculties. Quran doesn't awaken us day in and day out. Doesn't awaken us. Doesn't remind us about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Well, this only shows doubtful iman. This shows weakness of iman. Our Rasul used to awaken his people. He used to awaken the Sahaba. You find numerous narrations that you find about how he spoke to to awaken their iman. To remind him about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You find amongst his narrations he gave a khutbah. They said that we, he gave us such a sermon. We never ever heard a sermon like this inside our life. And he said to his companions, He said, if you knew what I knew, you would weep often. And you laugh seldom, very rarely you would laugh. You find all of them, they covered their faces as Sahaba. And there were sobbing sounds coming from a Sahaba. Weeping when they heard these words. The famous hadith of Irbari ibn Sariya and a surah of Tirmidhi. He gave them a maw'idah. Wajidat bin al qulub He gave them such a strong admonition. Their hearts began to shake. Their hearts began to move. With such an admonition, he gave them to awaken their iman. Eyes began to shed tears when he began to advise them certain things. Alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnati al-khulafai rashidin al-mahdiyin addu alayha bin nawakin. Look at the wording. It's an upon you to follow my sunnah. And the sunnah on the right, he guided four khulafa. Hold fast to these teachings, even with your mole teeth. Such an admonition he gave them that they know that this is coming to the end of the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa end of his life, end of his journey. What's the path of success? Hold fast to the Quran. Hold fast to the Sunnah is the path of success that we find. Likewise, we find numerous traditions speaking about these real men, these real individuals. Because some of us we may think that, this, that an element of weeping 
is a sign of weakness. Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the first Khalifa, Khalifa to Rasul that we find, he said about him, Muru Abu Bakr fal yusalli bin nas. He said, God, command Abu Bakr to lead the people in prayer. Aisha, his own daughter, says, radiallahu ta'ala anha, when my father leads the prayer, weeping overcomes him. The ayat, they come over him. Select someone else. And he rebukes her. That I'm selecting Abu Bakr as siddiq to lead the people in the prayer. When you lead the people in prayer, his sobbing overcomes him. So maybe some of us may think that maybe Abu Bakr was a soft-hearted individual. Read through the life of Umar al-Khattab. Read about his life. How when he would enter into the prayer, what would happen to him? It's at the end of Surah Yusuf that we find. It's at Surah Yusuf complaining to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Companions said that we were at the back of the masjid. And we can hear Umar al-Khattab weeping. Weeping due to the impact of these ayat. That's you find these great personalities, these individuals, read through their life. How was Umar al-Khattab taken in his life? How was he taken in Salatul Fajr? Stabbed inside Salatul Fajr, this individual, al-Majusi that we find. They say that ulama, the tarikh history, right? He made a dagger with two, two fronts. And he knew that Umar al-Khattab was a strong individual. And probably he had to poison it as well and d dig it into him whilst he's offering a prayer. Umar al-Khattab that we find, he bears that pain. He takes that pain, continues the prayer. And you find that when, when it's overcome, he's lying there. They went to find out whether Umar is alive or he's dead. They said there's only one way. There's only one way to find out. As-salah, as-salah, hayya and as-salah, call the prayer. I remind him about the prayer. For stay cover. He awoke. He said, if I missed the prayer, what's happened about the prayer? He's stabbed. He's dying. What awoken him? Remembering the prayer. That's why our Rasul mentioned as salah as salah wa ma malakat aymanukum on his deathbed. Rasul Hadith mentioned amongst his final words. He said as salah as salah wa ma malakat aymanukum. The prayer, the prayer, and what your right hand possesses all the way, all the way to the final moments of leaving this dunya. He's advising the people around him that no matter what happens inside your lives, never ever abandon your devotion commitment towards Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And thus we find that our, many of the companions, they used to weep about their state of affairs. Abdul Rahman ibn Auf, that we find one occasion companions, they met him. And he said to them, look at us. We're living a good life, a luxurious life. Maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us goodness in this world already. We're not going to get a share of the hereafter. And they began to, to weep, weep. Weep thinking that maybe, you know, the dunya has been given to us that there's going to be no shit inside the Akhirah for us. And that's how these individuals were towards their devotion and commitment towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's you find the fada and the virtues, the blessings of weeping for the, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You find that the, the eye that sheds tears, that's what ulama they mentioned when it comes to ibadah, have ibadah, ibadah sirriya, ibadah then in secrecy, to strengthen your, your, your iman, strengthen your iman in secrecy becomes devotion. All of us can be encouraged in a public domain to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is good. We all need that. But have moments inside your life all on your own to reflect about your life, about yourself, about my ending, about my return, about my resurrection, about my questioning, about my hisab, about what will happen to me, about my punishment, about my end, about my wealth, about my property, about my life, my children, everything. That's all of us we should do inside our lives. And as you find that, that concept of reflection that we find, that all of us, eventually time will come, the person will begin to weep. And we begin to think, what have I done in my life? What have I achieved in my life? What have I really gained inside my life? That I, which weeps in khashatillah, which weeps for the sake of Allah, that I will never be touched by the fire. Allah will never burn that I. will never torture that I that wept for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That, that is the fadail, the virtues of buqa min khashyatillah, the virtue of weeping for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And likewise, when other narrations speaking about 
that those are, that are his blessing. And likewise that blood which is spilled for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And likewise we find that on the day of judgment, seven types of individuals will be shaded. Amongst those seven types of individuals you find, وَرَجُلٌ ذَكَرَ اللَّهَ قَالِيًا فَفَاذِرْ عَيْنَاهُ A person who remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the eyes begin to shed tears. That person comes under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whereby there will be no shade. There will be no sanctity. That's one type of category that we find. Person who remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so much, it emotionally overcomes them. And as we mentioned time and time again, it's emotion, emotion overcoming, it leads them to what? It leads them to ta'a. It leads them to obedience. It leads them to change their life. It leads them to throw everything away. And this month of Ramadan is ideal. Day in and day out, we've been saying it. Day in and day out, we've been seeing it. That a good 16, 17 hours of fasting. You've been staying away from smoking, staying away from haram. Only a few hours. Give it up for the rest of your life. Walk away from it for the rest of your life. Ideal opportunity. Ramadan, everyone is praying. Everyone is fasting. Munkar is supposed to be diminished, is lessened. Ideal opportunity to walk, walk away from it. For your own sake. For your own personality, for your own iman, for your own return in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa usalli wa sallim ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man tamassaka bi sunnati la yawmi deen. Amma ba'd. The concept of as salah that we mentioned, wa qumu lillahi qaliteen. Stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a state of devotion and commitment towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as we find al-ihsan or al-ibadah, the pinnacle level of ibadah lillahi subhanahu wa ta'ala. An ta'bud Allah ka'annaka tarahu fa illam ta'kun tarahu fa innahu yaraq. Worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as though you see him. Even though you don't see him inside his dunya, but know that he sees you. And as we find numerous traditions that we find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pays attention, focuses towards his servant as long as the servant is focused towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When a person turns away, whether it be physically or whether inside their heart and their mind, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turns away from that individual. And thus you find that the concept of focus, of devotion, should begin in the life of the individual with as-salah. The first thing that an individual, the believer, will ask about on the day of judgment will be as-salah, will be their prayer. Then whatever comes after will be easy for the individual. And that's a, a Muslim should always be worried about that. Worried about their prayers, guarding their prayers. The symbol of a Muslim that we find. Ulema mentioned Miftahul Jannah. The, the key to Jannah. The key to Jannah after La ilaha illallah is as salah Is a key to Jannah that we find. So a, a person who hasn't made that effort, who hasn't made that devotion, who doesn't make that commitment, they are under, under the threat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Under the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's you find absaruha khashi'a. On that day, I, eyes will be fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not a place in the Quran, you find wujuh in yawma'idin khashi'a. Faces will be in a state of fear on that day. But a person who's been rejoicing their life with a prayer, with devotion that we find, they'll be rejoicing individuals. Does you find in this month of Ramadan, we should refresh our iman in studying about as salah. That's when the hadith in Bukhari that we find, Sallu kama ra'aytumuni usalli. Pray as you've seen me praying, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ayy, ayy madhab. Whatever madhab you want to follow, follow that. Refresh your iman. But I'll only hi highlight this. That when you come to follow, aqwal al-fuqaha wal ulama. You follow whatever madhab you want to follow inside your prayer. And not necessarily you may agree with all of it, but one key element. You'll find certain things, there's no difference of opinion. There are certain things about the prayer, whatever canon of law that you follow, there'll be core elements that many of us Muslims, we don't focus upon those core elements. Amongst those core elements that we find is Al-Qiyam. Is the standing of the Prophet He's standing in his devotion. His ruku, the way he went into ruku, his sujood, his tashahud that we find. Study these broad principles, these practices, you'll see how far away we are from the prayer of the Prophet you find numerous narrations, traditions that we find. Salatul Dhuhr. That a person go and carry out the call of nature and perform their wudu. This is Salatul Dhuhr. This is not Salatul Isha or Fajr whereby it's an extended prayer. And they can come back and find the Prophet Isha still in Raqqatul Ula, in the first unit of prayer. Still standing there in Salatul Dhuhr. 
We all know at the moment that the Imam will finish in six or seven minutes the prayer. We've all timed it. If, I, if I'm missing, I'll catch him in such and such a location. Why is that? Why has that become a mental state? Why is that a mental state that life has become clockwork? That I know I'll catch the last two rakah of Taraweeh. I'll just squeeze in the, the witter here. I'll squeeze in the final tashahud. I'll get the full reward. This is a mentality, a sickness inside our hearts and our mind. Then we want the ultimate reward to be given to us. Inna li salati shughula. Salah has a commitment. It's work. It's devotion. It's hardship. It's pain. It's, it's deliverance. It's breaking away. That's what a salah is as the hadith in states. So a person has to give the due right of the salah. <coughs> Not when a person feels like squeezing in a salah inside their life. Or just running to the masjid. <coughs> and just saying that I've I done a formality. These are the type of words that we use. I've done a formality. I, I prayed my Jum'ah. I read my salah. I, I caught two rakah of taraweeh. That's what, that's what I did. This, this, this mentality is a defeated mentality. It's a weak mentality. A lack of devotion, commitment towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Muslim is one who does the utmost, who excels, who exceeds, who strives and struggles. And you know what they say to themselves? I haven't done enough. I haven't done enough in my life. Allah accepts from the pious individual. I don't think my actions will be accepted. That's why you find that many of the companions used to highlight. That if I knew that just two units of prayer being accepted by Allah, I would be the most successful individual on the face of this earth. If I need just two raka'at, two accepted by Allah, I'm the, I'll rejoice. I'll rejoice in my life. Look at the way we rejoice in our life. We think we're doing a great service. We think we're helping Allah. Kalla wa asha. May Allah for me. We think we're helping Allah in this month of Ramadan. We think we're doing a service. That's what many of us, this is a mentality. We're helping Allah by fasting in Ramadan. Yamununa alayka al aslamu. That's what the Arabs said. The Bedouin said, we're doing a great service. You know, if all of this Muslim Ummah was to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala day in and day out, it would not increase the kingdomship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just like the needle is dipped into the ocean, look at what clings onto the eye of the needle. That's not just talking about this Ummah. That's talking right from the beginning of time to the end of time. If every single individual became the one heart, one pure heart, it means nothing to Allah. It means nothing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And likewise the opposite. If every single individual disobeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it will not diminish the kingdomship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just like you find a needle is dipped into the ocean once again. What clings to the eye of the needle? The, the favor is upon us. The favor is to us that it's the month of Ramadan. The favor is for us to wash away our sins, to wash away our life, to wash out our discrepancies, to wash and cleanse ourselves, to return back to Allah in a pure state. the afternoon bashar That is the ultimate blessing for a human being. Wa rabbuka ghafoor. Your Lord is one who forgives, who pardons, who overlooks, who wipes out, who blots, who changes, who encourages, who finds moments who awakens you, who finds the night, the day, every moment, you fall, you collapse, you sin, you disobey, yet Allah opens up the doors again and say, ibadi. They're my servants, they're my creation, they're my people, they're my loved ones. Bring them closer back, return them back, return them back to me. So I may show them that who is the one that forgives, who's the one that pardons. Kulli, say to my believing servants, La Inna Allah yaghfiru dhunuba jami'a Say to my believing servants, don't despair from the mercy of Allah. I forgive all sins, pardon all sins, wipe out all the sins of human beings. That is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And thus we find as-salatu nur. As-salat is nur. It's physical light for the individual. It guides you. It guides you in every single thing that you want to do inside your life. Wa hatta amur dunya, things of the world. Look at the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, anything of the world that overcame him, anything that troubled him, what would he do inside his life? He read two rakah of salah. That's what he would do. Two rakah of salah would take away all of his problems, will give him the focus. Well, likewise, you find a nur. Fi quburina. Nur, you want light inside your graves. You want expansion of the graves. What would it be? It would be a salah. A salah when Quran would intercede for the individual will come into the grave of the individual. 
Hadduka min al-Islami, hadduka min al-Salah. The only thing that is shay of Islam is the shay of the prayer. All of us have to return inside that Torah, in that dust, in that mud. You know, all of us, when we see that sight, it, it makes us think, it makes us ponder that, you know, one day I'm going to be there. What will help me? What will save me? What will give me some encouragement inside that location? What will it be? It will be a salatuka, your prayer. That's when salah will come to the individual. It will come in an in a, in a even vision individual, a human being's format, you'll come in the, in the grave. And the person said, your face is horrible. Your image is horrible. And it's a foul stench. Who are you? What are you inside my grave? I'm your prayer. You wasted me. You never prayed. You, you took no care of me. Here I am now meeting you inside the grave. And then will come an individual with a bright radiant face, with a radiant garment, with beautiful fragrance. Person say, who are you? Who's entered inside my grave? I'm your prayer. You guarded me. You preserved me. You looked after me. Today I've come to meet you inside the grave. This is all of our graves. All of our graves, and I have to meet that. So we ask Allah to give us success inside this dunya. In his final moments of Ramadan, to awaken ourselves, to exert ourselves to find, to search for Laylatul Qadr, to search for the completion of Ramadan, a state of ta'a, and a state of obedience in a state of deliverance, in a state of forgiveness, in a state of change. That's how we should be praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to awaken our souls within our souls, to become better individuals. Because none of us truly knows, and none of us actually doesn't know at all that who will make it to the following Ramadan. And that's you find a person will come on a day of judgment. The person the Quran is very accurate, very unique. It's sort of the Quran, the person will say, وقال الرسول, يا رب إن قوم اتخذوا هذا القرآن Mahjura. The message is like, oh my, oh my Lord, my people have abandoned the Quran, walked away from the Quran. The same context as the ayah, the person will say, woe upon me, woe upon me, that I took such and such individual, fulan and khalila, waqad adallani anil dhikri ba'da ja'ani. So woe upon me, what a wretched individual I am. I took such and such individual as my friend. And what did his friend do to me? Look at how accurate the Quran is. This person took me away from your remembrance after guidance came to me. What type of friends do we have? What type of environment that we have? Are there friends who remind us about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Or are there friends who drift us away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The real friend is the one that reminds you about Allah. That encourages you to come close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the tawfiq and ability to have suhbah salih, to have righteous people around us who remind us about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who make us reflect about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who encourage us to do good deeds, to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.